Hi, welcome back to our video Q&A. This week we have a question from Henry. Um, hi, my name's Henry. Just a quick question. How much water do I put in my water rocket? Thanks for your question, Henry. Uh, the generally accepted rule of thumb is that you want about one third full of water and two thirds full of air. So let's have a look why that is and later on we'll have a look at a real world experiment and finally we'll also fly a water rocket without any water to see how it performs. So let's get started. To generate thrust a rocket must accelerate the mass in one direction in order for it to accelerate in the other. That's just Newton's third law. In a water rocket the energy comes from compressed air. Now while you can store a lot of energy in compressed air it isn't very heavy and so it doesn't provide a lot of reaction mass to accelerate. We can use something heavy like water to give us that mass, but because you can't really compress it, you can't throw a lot of energy in it. So we use a combination of both air and water to achieve the best results. Because both air and water share the same volume inside the rocket, there has to be a trade-off between how much we can use of each. Too much air and we don't have a lot of mass to accelerate, and too much water makes the rocket heavy for the small amount of air that's left to provide much energy to accelerate. As it turns out, the trade-off is about one-third water and two-thirds air, and that's largely independent of the size of the rocket. Here's a simulated prediction for a particular rocket with varying amounts of water. As you can see for this rocket, the optimum is close to 32%. The predictions here are from two different water rocket simulators. Okay, so let's see how those predictions reflect the real world. First, you need to roll out the safety barrier tape. The first flight here has only 3% of water in it. With the rocket pressurized to 110 psi. Three, two, one, go. Next, we added 15% water and launched it again at the same one, pressure. Go. Then we topped it up again, but this time with 30%. Two, one, go. When you're doing experiments, you've got to deal with all sorts of issues like leaks, wind, kangaroos hopping across the field, you know, the usual things. Three, and here the rocket has 45% water. And lastly, we launch with 60% water. Two, one, go. The rocket was pretty heavy at this stage and with the smaller nozzle, it struggled to take off. So this is how the flights compared to the predictions. The yellow points shown here are the altitudes from the actual experiment. You can see that they are fairly close to the predictions. The exact amount of water is not critical, as even plus or minus 5% from the ideal will make you lose only a few feet in altitude. So don't worry too much if you spill a little bit while putting your rocket on the launch pad. While one third is the general rule of thumb, the exact optimal amount can vary from 25 to 45% or more, depending on what you're trying to achieve, such as maximum acceleration or lifting heavy payloads. For information how the various factors affect the optimal amount, please visit the link below. So what happens when you fill the rocket with only air? Well, it's a lot easier to put onto the launch pad for one thing. Here we've pressurized it again to the same pressure. As you can see, the rocket only reached 37% of the altitude compared to when it was flown with a third full of water. So that's it for this week. Thanks for watching and we'll see you next time.